So thanks for uh, keeping me here. Um, but let me let me give you one short advice uh, in terms of your guest selection. When you invite Atta Kennedy to your show, you don't need to invite me. <laughs> the man speaks for me on so many issues. Right. Uh, and I say that to say that I pretty much endorse every one of of the, the comments that is made. The two of you, um, we get you only once in a while. So please, let's uh, this, enjoy this it. Issue, <laughs> it. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is quite, quite refreshing uh, mm -hmm. hearing him again. Now, again, I think, I think I, I must echo his sentiments that, um, yes, we have punched below our weight. There's no doubt about it. You know, but, well, but we must grant a few things for starts. You know, independence was significant. And I think Arthur Kennedy makes a very important point, the timing of our independence and the, some of the changes that took place in the status of black people globally, including across the Atlantic. These are not accidental. In fact, in the 1954 issue of Time magazine, Nkrumah's face was the cover face. And when you read the feature articles in there, uh, the strong connections being made with developments going on at the time in the U U.S. Uh, as well as in, um, in Africa outside of the Gold Coast at the time. This was even before Ghana. Connections being made between the decision in Brown versus Board of Education and, you know, things happening in, in the American South as well as, you know, and the connection being made with independence in Ghana. But I think even internally, I mean, we have uh, achieved uh, something significant. Uh, not many countries have been able to hold together as an independent nation. We, our social cohesion, uh, despite all the divisions in our politics, is something that I think we have managed to, to, to secure quite well. Our territorial integrity is not at all in question or in doubt. We have not descended or degenerated into fragile state or failed state status, notwithstanding all our challenges. So, and, and those things are important because you must have stateness. The quality of stateness is important to have as a foundation for building anything else. So we may not have built a good economy, our politics, it's nothing to write home about, but we have the quality of stateness and that counts for a lot. So I think that we can start from there. And, and then concede that we have grossly punched below our weight. Now, I think one of the failures uh, we have suffered in the course of our journey is to have taken quite literally what Nkrumah said about seek ye first the political kingdom mm. and all other things shall be added unto you. What was the context? For Nkrumah, I think at the time he made a statement, the political kingdom was to capture sovereign control of the state from the colonialists. That was a political project. The most urgent political project at the time was to capture sovereign control of the state from the colonial. So it was independence. The political kingdom was to have the state. The all other things shall be added meant that, you know, without having sovereign control of the state, political power in the hands of your own people, there is little else that you can do. Now, we then take that and from everything we've done since independence, it looks like we then internalized it. It was not for us a, a contest between indigenous and foreign control or colonial control, but it then became about a contest between political factions internally. So we have since then been basically seeking the political kingdom for factional use. Mm -hmm. One party or one faction of the political class seeks to capture the state not to do anything grand, not to benchmark ourselves against Malaysia, not to benchmark ourselves against Singapore, Singapore not to benchmark yeah. ourselves against South Korea. Hmm. These were our peer nations in terms of the countries up, 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 you know, who were also liberated or who self-liberated around the same time as we did. We captured the state in other, so that the other rival, our rivals will be excluded from the spoils of power. So for us, the capture of the state, it's not for the ambition that Nkrumah said, which is that you have the state so that as a sovereign, you can then reach for greater heights. The, the things that Atta Kennedy has spoken about, intellectual liberation, 
you know, cultural liberation. Uh, these are the things that, the all other things that will be added, not because they'll be, they will, they will not be added without effort, but at least once you have control of your own destiny as a country, then you can actually make these pathways towards real liberation. That is what we have failed at. And so we have basically been in the doldrums, in the wilderness, we haven't made very intelligent use, for example, of our natural resources. Look at just the sheer, you know, in terms of the Gold Coast, we want to call the Gold Coast for nothing. Mm. It meant something. How have we used the gold, our gold resources, for example, as a country? We, how have we used at independence everything that we had when we were elementary school? We knew we had bauxite, we had manganese, we had, how have we used any of these things? And then on top of this comes oil. So basically, we have not really liberated ourselves. We have not understood the essence of Nkrumah's CQ first, the political kingdom. We have seen it only in very parochial, you know, uh, provincial, sectional, you know, inter-party, you know, you know, rivalry terms. And that, I think, is really destructive. If the benchmarking we're going to do as a country is between NPP and NDC, then we're not going to go very far at all. Mm. The benchmarking we ought to do is the one that South Korea did, looking at its former colonialists and saying, we really, have, we really have some ambition here. We need to prove to the Japanese that we too, we can do this. We need to prove to the North Koreans that we can do that. The Singaporeans, you know, Lee Kuan Yew had to prove to the Malaysians, you know, right. they were actually independent together with Malaysia. The Malaysians sacked them. They thought these were these are just dead weights. They're going to be a burden on us. Right. They had something to prove. What do we have to prove? What are we trying to prove? Right? We make hollow noises about sovereignty. You know, we are free country, we are free. What, what do we have to prove? You know, by passing an anti-LGBT law is how we express our sovereignty. That's a fairly hollow one. I mean, exactly what is the what does that mean? Right? We need to get serious about the business of nation building. Okay. We need to get ambitious. Mm. We need to find a place in the sun. Most countries that do well want a place in the sun. They are driven by huge ambition, mm. grand ambition. Mm. Not this, you know, very, you know, mediocre NPP versus NDC kind of fight. <laughs> uh, you did that, oh, you two, you know, we did that better than you on this one. We see this picture, we, we are tiring this road. And you are here. I mean, this is 2024 for goodness sake, right? So I think we've set our mm. size too low. Mm. The ambition is too low. We've punched below our weight. Too much mediocrity. We've settled for too little. Even our politics hasn't matured. Just look at our politics. Look at our political parties. Where is the maturity? Look at the quality of our discourse. Mm. Where is the maturity? All right. right? And these are mm. things that make mm. nations. These are the things that make nations. Right. Not just this perspective. Independence, you go on a march every six months and you say you're independent. Thank you, Prof. So now, that's cool. Right. Thank you, Prof, very much. And uh, thank you for making time to be with us. We know that you have to take leave of us right now.